All right, Shalom. Want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, and salutations to the Lord's whole four legs scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And this one is going to be really quick. It's an article came across. It says Pope Francis calls for new world order after the pandemic. All right. So Pope Francis calls for a new world order after this so-called pandemic we're in. And um, this is nothing but more. Uh, Pope Francis, you know, announcing his allegiance with the B system. And this is prophecy. All right. Because according to prophecy in the book of Revelation 16. All right. This Roman Catholic Church is the false prophet. All right. So it says here, Rome, Pope Francis insists in a new book. Things will never be the same in a post pandemic world. Calling instead for the establishment of a new world order. Now, when you hear those words, new world order. All right. Most people think conspiracy. But this is not a conspiracy. It's conspiracy fact. All right. It's it's an underhand. Um, consp it's a conspiring plot to underhand a people. And it starts with the Israelites because uh, a lot of people, they don't understand that it, this is a spiritual war and it's all about the truth. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order can emerge, a new era, freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace. An era in which the nations of the world, east and west, north and south, can prosper and live in harmony. A hundred generations have searched for this elusive path to peace, while a thousand wars raged across the span of human endeavor. And today that new world is struggling to be born. A world quite different from the one we've known. A world where the rule of law supplants the rule of the jungle. A world in which nations recognize the shared responsibility for freedom and justice. A world where the strong respect the rights of the weak. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. It's all about, you know, the lies and deceptions that Satan and his devil, okay, the serpent he pushes so he can have power and control, you know, over the whole world. But the Lord is going to bring that to an end. All right. I did a lesson yesterday, which is uh, uh, the Lord would allow Esau to uh, meet the heights of his excellency. You know, when you go into that word excellency in the book of Job, it actually gets into his uh, loftiness pride. All right, so the pride, when his pride is at his maximum level, the Lord is going to destroy you Edomites, all right? And it's starting with you elites, all right? These international banking families who run the world and that's pushing these, this agenda, all right? The new world order, we're in it already. It has started. And it consists of what they call the fourth industrial revolution, which is transhumanism, all right? Robots. Um, gene, DNA editing, and so on. It's all about total power and control, all right? And tracking. Esau want to sit in the seat of the Most High. He wants to be as though he is the Most High. All right, so the title of this article is Pope Francis Calls for a New World Order After the Pandemic. So now I want to read the scripture, Revelation 16, 13. It says, and I saw three... Three unclean spirits 
like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. All right. So what are these three unclean spirit like frogs that came out of the dragon and out of the beast and out of the false prophet? That dragon represents the Roman Empire and his judicial system, which goes back to Roman law. All right. So when you go back and read Revelations 13 and 3, uh, that, that scripture says, and I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, meaning Rome was going to be destroyed. I believe it fell around 193 AD. OK. And um, Esau got pushed into those caves. And this is when the time uh, Jake, we ruled Europe called the Byzantine Empire. But it says uh, and his deadly wound was healed. So this means that this same dragon was going to come back into power, which is as the Roman power. All right. The Roman system. OK. And it says in all the world wondered after the beast. So around the time when Esau was healed, about a thousand years later, mid late 13 to 1300s to 1400s. All right. Um. You had also, you know, they started back up in uh, the Borgia family around 1455. And that's when the system of this Roman law, you know, been in, been in effect. So really today, we're in the modern day of Rome. We're in his second leg, all right, according to Daniel's uh, dream. Which is uh, the legs of iron and the feet part of iron and part clay. That's the Roman Empire. All right. The legs of iron represents the Roman Empire. And what was the Roman Empire known for was the austerior measures. All right. And then you had the feet part of iron and clay that represents America. All right. The American Empire today, the feet represents the 10 toes and the 10 horns, which uh, came out of the EU European Union. All right. Uh, this came out of the 10 common markets, which was of the Roman Empire. All right. And which this feat represents the end of his system. So we at the end of Esau's kingdom. According to Daniel's dream. All right. Which America came out of Britain. So this is Revelation 16 and 13 again. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. So that dragon represents the Roman Empire. Now it says and out of the mouth of the beast. Now the beast is NATO. North Atlantic Treaty Organization, okay? This is NATO. This is who's going to war with Yahweh Shai. Who's going to make war with Yahweh Shai, all right? And it says, out of the mouth of the false prophet. Who's the false prophet? The Roman Catholic Church, all right? These guys, starting with Pope Francis. And you can see here in the article, he's announcing his allegiance with this new world order. So he's in sync with the international bankers, the Rothschilds, which is the house of Esau. Okay. Because he is an Edomite. All right. And um, also too, you have the, um, you have the three uh, branches, which is the military, the finances and the spiritual. Okay. You got the DC Obelix, the London Obelix, and then you have that Vatican City Obelix, which is the spiritual. All right. So it says, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. It says, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of Yahweh Almighty, which that Almighty goes into Alasaija, okay? Meaning the Lord is a devastator. And he's going to sure devastate these Edomites' rulership. Verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, Le uh, least he walk naked and they see his shame. All right, so it's up to us brothers, you know, to remain you know, diligent in this truth and enduring all the way to the end. All right. Keeping sound doctrine and um, continuing to prophesy as which we was taught. All right. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, and our apostles and elders 
okay, up here at Great Millstone. All right. Now it says, verse 16, and he gathered them together into a place called the Hebrew tongue, uh, Armageddon. Because what's going to happen is uh, the destruction of Esau's kingdom is going to come to an end by the ways of thermonuclear destruction and by the ways of Yahweh Shai and the angels. All right. So, like I said, I said it was going to be quick. This is an uh, article, Pope Francis calls for new world order after the pandemic. All right. So he's just... Uh, announcing his allegiance, their allegiance with the uh, what you call one percent, the elite banking families, which is the house of Esau who runs the world. And this is Bible prophecy. So, with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. In the words of Winston Churchill, a world order in which the principles of justice and fair play protect the weak against the strong. A world where the United Nations freed from Cold War stalemate, is poised to fulfill the historic vision of its founders.